Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Hayden and I am a graduate student at California State University Chico and I work with Dr. Kim Jackson. Um, I'd like to contribute to our ongoing discussion of uh, access, privacy, and trust from a student perspective, um, as well as kind of integrate a few ways that I am seeing the paradigms of trust and access change uh, with the emergence of various digital platforms that I'm actually looking into and researching. So for me, um, I have to say that in many aspects that trust is a double-edged sword. As a student walking into a classroom, which I've done many times, um, I trust automatically that the teacher is going to fulfill a role by educating me to the best of their ability. That's just always been something that I've had. However, on the other hand, the fact that uh, I know that the teacher holds the power of you know, being the grade keeper, this causes the building of trust to definitely be more difficult. Um, in relation to what Audrey said, I think that the fact that these power structures are at play is very much so what's keeping students from being able to explore and form their own learning practices, especially within educational institutions um, nowadays. Instead, uh, what we're seeing is that students take on the practices that they're learning in the classroom because they want to make sure that they're not going to do something wrong or that they're not going to be viewed as the bad student or that they will get the good grades. Um, what this means is that students are not only lacking trust towards other practices and attempting other tr practices, but they're also lacking trust within themselves, which I think is a huge issue. Um, I do agree with Audrey in the respect that in order to gain trust, it definitely involves a degree of vulnerability. And I think when we take this into account, uh, I believe that in order to shift the current institutional paradigm of trust, we need to look at how we are creating a caring culture with our students in which both students and educators engage in a certain level of vulnerability. Um, an example that I'm thinking of is what we currently do with um, our English 130P here at Chico is we have very much so a mentorship dynamic with our students versus the traditional teacher-student relationship. This allows the students the opportunities to not only engage in the messiness of learning, which I think is crucial, um, but it also allows them to trust themselves and to broaden the spectrum of access as they begin to search for answers to their own questions that they're creating. Um, I'd also like to touch upon a few comments that Ulrich made during his recording. Um, first and foremost, I'm really glad that he spoke about the social aspects of trust and what that means. Um, and I'll talk about that here in a second. In my mind, when students focus on you know, how they are doing individually and how they are understanding the material individually and how they are contributing to their grade, it presents very little room for them to focus on how they can create meaning with their peers. So um, the other thing I want to comment on is Ulrich's comment regarding trust takes time and effort. 80% um, of the time, absolutely, I would completely agree with this. However, as I'm moving through my own research, I'm finding that there are instances in which trust do transcend time and effort. And specifically what I'm thinking of is massively multiplayer online gaming. Um, I say this because I've taken a lot of time watching my fellow peers and students interact in these virtual worlds. And it's incredible the fact that they can be put into a situation where they have created a, a virtual identity, which they project their real world identity onto, and that um, in order for them to succeed, especially in rating situations where you're with 20 or more strangers, you have to build that instant trust with someone. You have to create an instant digital trust in order to achieve a common goal. Um, in order for you to trust that each player understands their virtual character strengths, you have to be able to understand that or believe that you know, other players know their weaknesses. They know the mechanics of the fight. They know um, and share the same common goal, which generally means that they want to, you know, beat the boss in order to become better. Um, I've seen it time and time and again, and, and this trust, I mean, it happens instantaneously amongst a total group of strangers. I think that by trusting their fellow players, individuals also... Uh, feel a sense of trust that they have access to resources that they need in order to succeed and reach their common goal. So because they understand the weaknesses of their character and what their character 
brings to the field. They have to trust those other characters that they will do their job in order for them all to in order for them all to succeed. Um, I also think that this creates a sense of what I've witnessed is a lot of characters don't or players don't necessarily think about what if I do it wrong or I don't think that I have the skills, therefore I can't accomplish the goal. What will happen is if a player does something wrong, then the group gets to try again. Um, or the player will put their trust into fellow players that they will use their skills in order to ensure the success of the group. I think this not only agrees with Ulrich's example of trust consisting of social practices and the need for social practices within trust and privacy and access, but it also um, plays into Audrey's claim of the power of vulnerability. Being able to go into a situation where you don't know people and trust them that you will be able to succeed in the end. I think it's also interesting the fact that players are able to project their identity onto a virtual character. Um, that instills in itself a certain degree of privacy, at least for the real world identity. So to wrap this up a little bit, when I think of the future and I think of... Um, some of the platforms such as MMOs and um, other digital platforms that are out there, I think that these platforms hold very crucial information in regards to the potential structures um, that could be put in place in educational institutions that can help us create a more positive culture of trust and access for our students.